With one of the best autofocus systems on the market, the OM-1 is almost infallible, if set up and used correctly. This video will provide a number of best practices and recommended settings to ensure peak performance under all circumstances. My name is Thomas Eisel, I'm a professional photographer from Vienna, Austria. My comprehensive series on the OM system OM-1 is recommended for the demanding photographer who wants to maximize the performance of their camera. To make full use of the information in this video, you should have a general understanding of the autofocus system used in OM system or Olympus cameras, and ideally, you have already shot a few frames with the OM-1. Without further ado, let's get started. In order to achieve peak autofocus performance with the OM-1, the right lenses are key. So some lens choices might limit autofocus performance. In my experience, the Olympus or OM system Suico Pro series and the Panasonic Leica series guarantee peak performance. I had very good results even under very challenging lighting situations. Talking about challenging lighting situations, one thing to consider is when you shoot with the OM-1 in low light and use continuous autofocus, the camera will use the largest aperture to acquire focus. Therefore, if you are using a very slow lens, this can impact autofocus performance. So in dark situations, always pick a faster lens if possible. Another thing to consider when it comes to lenses and autofocus performance is that you should also update the firmware of your lenses regularly. Choosing the right autofocus mode for the subject and situation is key. I want to talk about the two main modes of the OM-1. It's SAF and CAF. In SAF, the OM-1 uses predominantly contrast detection to acquire focus. The great thing about contrast detection is that it is incredibly precise and focal length, subject distance and even low light does not really impact the accuracy of contrast detection. However, there is one problem with contrast detection. If the subject moves, the camera may fail to acquire focus. So use SAF for still subjects, but also use it when shooting very long focal lengths at great distances and when there is little to no subject movement in the frame. The other important mode is of course CAF, continuous autofocus. In continuous autofocus, the OM-1 will use predominantly phase detection. And phase detection is great because it can follow the subject movements and yeah, it's also pretty quick. However, there is a major disadvantage and that is that phase detection is less accurate compared to SAF. So the rule of thumb is use SAF whenever possible. If there is subject movement and SAF cannot really get you the shot, use CAF. I would like to take the opportunity to illustrate the fundamental difference between SAF and CAF in practice. So as I mentioned previously, SAF uses contrast detection autofocus predominantly. And when you are in single point, you get this little green box. And you might think that the whole green box is used to perform the contrast calculation. That is, however, not the case. The OM-1 uses an even smaller, very precise pinpoint area to perform the contrast calculation. And the great thing about that is that the OM-1 is able to achieve precision that was not possible with other cameras in the past. You can focus on a strand of hair or a paper's edge which is about 0.1 millimeters thin without any problems. Also you can focus on the eye of a subject with a super long telephoto lens and the subject can be really far away and you 
even get very accurate and precise focus acquisition. However, if you place this little box over a featureless area, the camera of course cannot perform a proper contrast calculation and it cannot focus. So always place this little box over a contrasty area. When you are in ultra low light situations, the camera sensor produces noise in order to provide the electronic preview. And this noise of course also influences the contrast calculation. So it might be possible that you cannot focus on a low contrast area in very dark situations. For these circumstances I recommend switching the camera to CAF. And here is the function lever that allows you to do that. I've programmed it to switch between two autofocus modes. Now the camera is in CAF. And also this means that it performs face detection and not contrast detection. And face detection has a different detection threshold and it's actually a completely different autofocus method. And this improves the OM1's capability to focus on even featureless surfaces and in low light situations. To operate like I just illustrated, go into the menu, pick the cogwheel, pick one operations and then go to function lever settings. There you have the function lever function in photo mode and you should set it to mode 2. This allows you to switch between the AF mode and the AF target mode. And what this essentially does in practice is that when I go to 1, for example, I press the autofocus selection once and select single autofocus. Then I switch to mode 2 and I just make sure that continuous autofocus is programmed to mode 2. And by that I have a super convenient, super fast way to switch between these two modes in practice. Probably the most important yet often overlooked factor when it comes to reliable autofocus performance with the OM1 is the AF target size. A common mistake is that the AF target is too big. So it's actually bigger than the subject you want to shoot. And the problem with that is that the OM1 then can grab the focus of something in the foreground or background. Even if you activate center priority, this can be the case. The camera just doesn't know what the actual subject is and it cannot because you have to know you are the photographer. So the tip here is always use an AF target that is slightly or considerably smaller than the subject you want to take a photograph of. I've now set the OM1 to SAF and picked all autofocus targets. When I press the shutter button halfway to acquire focus, the camera will pick an autofocus target right here in front and it will focus on the lens in the foreground. The problem is that I actually want to focus on the target in the center. So what I have to do is I have to switch to a smaller target quite obviously. And I programmed my AF on button to allow me to select autofocus targets. Let's go to single point. And of course now the OM1 focuses where I want it to focus. The other target that I use quite often is the small AF target. Actually in practice I never use a target other than the small one and the single point target. Just to illustrate as I mentioned it previously when switching to continuous autofocus you get a small black frame in the center when center priority is on. It's always on with the small AF target by the way but if you pick a bigger AF target then you can turn it off and it's optional. In any case this just means that the camera will try to focus in the center first using face detection. But really in practice this does not make a big difference and accurate AF target placement is key. So even in face detection you can use the small autofocus point to get the camera to focus where you want it to. And if you are having problems acquiring focus as the target is moving around a lot or that you are for example in very bad lighting circumstances you can just increase the target size to small 
And that usually does the trick because then the OM1 uses more face detection points to acquire focus. Regarding autofocus sensitivity, AF sensitivity, I highly recommend not changing the AF sensitivity in the OM1 unless you encounter a very specific issue. In my experience, changing the autofocus sensitivity can actually be detrimental to the OM1's autofocus performance. So the key situations where you might want to change the AF sensitivity are when you are, for example, tracking a moving subject and objects are in the way. By lowering the AF sensitivity to minus one or even minus two, the OM1 won't refocus as quickly. If you are, however, on the contrary, tracking a subject that has very erratic movement and changes distance a lot, especially in close vicinity, you might want to pick AF sensitivity plus one or plus two as then the OM1 will refocus faster than when set to zero. However, I can only repeat, leave it to zero unless you encounter a problem with the hit rate. Let me show you how to set the AF sensitivity in case you have to make adjustments. Go to the menu, select the AF menu and then go to 3 AF and the first item is already AF sensitivity and there you can set it to plus 2 or minus 2 or somewhere in between. I'm gonna leave it to zero. Keep in mind that AF sensitivity only influences continuous autofocus. It does not change a thing with SAF quite obviously as SAF uses contrast calculations When photographing moving subjects with the OM system OM1, there are basically two approaches. Both are perfectly fine. The first one is what I call high volume approach. In the high volume approach, as the name already suggests, you set the OM1 to capture as many frames as possible. And then in post-production, you pick all the frames that are in focus yeah, and decide which of the images you want to post or print or deliver to the client. The second approach is of course the low volume approach. When working with the low volume approach, you try to make sure that the OM1 will get every shot or almost every shot and then you kind of have to sort through fewer pictures. So which one of those two methods leads to higher hit rates? In my experience, the high volume mode leads to higher hit rates in general. However, if configured correctly and if you stick to the tips I give in this video, you will usually get an exceptionally high hit rate with the low volume approach as well. So it is a matter of taste, but keep one thing in mind. If you are shooting with the low volume method and you see that there are too few keepers, don't blame the camera, just crank up the drive speed, capture more frames, and you're gonna be good. The release priority setting determines whether the OM1 will fire the shutter even when it thinks the subject is not in focus. And here is a keyword, when it thinks that it is not in focus. So the issue can be if you set release priority to on, then of course the camera will take images regardless of whether it's in focus or not. If you set it to off, well, the camera might not take a photograph that is actually in sharp focus. The camera is quite conservative with its uh, assessment of what is in focus and what is not. And you might miss a perfectly sharp shot um, just because the camera is, well, too conservative with that. In any case, my general recommendation is when you are using the high volume method for sh shooting moving subjects, turn release priority on so you get the maximum amount of frames. If you shoot the low volume approach, turn it off because, well, you want more sharp pictures and less images in total. Here is how you set the release priority. Go to the menu, go to the AF menu, then 
submenu 1 AF and right here at the bottom is release priority. You can set it separately for SAF and CAF. Setting the correct drive speed is absolutely crucial to get a satisfactory result. If you shoot with the low volume approach in mind, then limit the drive speed to a reasonable amount of frames. So I'm talking about 5-10 frames per second depending on the subject you are trying to capture. So for example when shooting fashion shows I usually limit the drive speed to around 5 to 10 images per second because that is more than enough, right? But when you are shooting with the high volume approach, for example capturing ultra fast moving wildlife, birds, probably even racing cars, well that's not wildlife but it, they are also quite fast, then I recommend setting the highest drive speed possible. Another great option is activating Pro Capture Mode because in Pro Capture Mode you will get even more frames. The more frames you capture, the more keepers you will have in total. So if you are fine with dealing with a lot of images, well, then turn up the drive speed. Go to the menu, uh, first menu, then go to the submenu 7, which is drive mode. There you can do a couple of things, but we are interested in the sequential shooting settings. There you can select the maximum frames per second for each individual mode. So here is continuous mechanical shutter, continuous electronic or silent shutter, and so on and so forth. Really go in there, make some adjustments if you need to. It's um, pretty self-explanatory when you open up these sub-menus as it really tells you what it's about to do. The next autofocus performance tip might surprise you quite a bit. And it is actually turning on the autofocus beep. Because what I noticed, one of the major causes for poor results is actually premature shutter actuation. Sounds funny? Well, it kinda is. And the problem is that the OM-1 actually focuses on the subject but you release the shutter too quickly and it seems that the camera is programmed in a way that even with release priority off the camera will take the first frame even if it's slightly out of focus. So I think it's a very good way to program the camera this way but you have to keep that in mind. And the problem is when you miss initial focus the camera is often struggling to really get the shot. And that's, of course, well, very understandable because every time the shutter fires, you have a short blackout period, so it's getting harder and harder for the camera to get the shot. But there is actually a very easy workaround. Leave the autofocus beep on because then the camera will give you this signal that it has acquired initial focus and then you just press the shutter button and get the shot. And really, you cannot imagine how much my results improved with this little tip. So here is how you set the AF confirmation beep. Go to the menu, then go to the spanner, pick submenu 3, monitor sound connection, and down there you have this uh, sound symbol. Just go in there, set it to on. And now, as you heard previously, the OM-1 gives us this very convenient AF confirmation beep. I really like it. Very busy scenes, flickering LED lights and quickly changing lighting circumstances like stage lighting. Those are things that really impact the autofocus performance of every camera. However, the OM-1 is so good that it can focus reliably under these circumstances. If you consider a few things. Subject detection is 
a great support for many situations. And for example, when shooting wildlife, outdoors and so on, even OM system recommends using subject detection over a single autofocus point. The problem with subject detection, this also includes face detection of course, is that when the lighting circumstances are changing very quickly and yeah, flickering LED lights and so on and so forth, what I mentioned previously, the camera might recognize a subject where there is actually none. And then it grabs onto stuff in the frame and you will actually not get the shot you were looking for. So here is the tip, under very challenging circumstances, turn subject detection off and also turn face detection off. Use the single point or small autofocus target instead. You'll be surprised how big the difference will be. Also consider, as long as subject detection is turned on, the OM-1 will constantly be on the lookout for a subject in the frame. So that's taking up computing power as well. So turning subject detection off under very challenging circumstances really, really improved my hit rate. Another great technique that works with almost any camera is what I like to call burst shooting. And it really helps to improve the hit rate. It works like this. Bring up the camera, aim at the subject, press AF on or half press the shutter, no matter where you have the AF activation. Wait for the autofocus confirmation, the beep. Then fire a quick burst. Release the shutter, release the autofocus and then re-engage the autofocus. Wait for the AF beep. Fire a couple of shots, rinse and repeat as long as needed. By doing so, you allow the camera to grab onto the subject every single time and you actually help the camera out because it doesn't have to track the subject for an extended period of time, but just for this small burst duration. Here is how burst shooting works in practice. Before using this technique, it is very important to turn image review off. Go to the menu, first camera menu, and then almost at the bottom, image review. From auto to off, that's important, because otherwise you're gonna get image previews in between bursts and it's not gonna work properly. So here we go, let's assume that our lens calibration target is moving around like crazy. So we're gonna acquire focus, we get the beep. Now we fire our burst, then we let go completely, re-engage focus, next burst, let go, re-engage focus, next burst. And that's the whole deal. Now that we've talked about photographing moving subjects and photographing moving subjects under challenging lighting circumstances, I'd like to conclude this video with a few general recommendations and considerations when it comes to settings. The AF illuminator is one of those settings that we keep turning off because who wants a red light flashing into the face of our subject? Well, the thing is, when the OM-1 flashes this red light, it actually needs it. So, whenever possible, leave the AF illuminator to on. I'd even recommend going one step further and using a dedicated micro four thirds flash unit with a dedicated mirrorless compatible LED that can serve as an AF illuminator. It is very important to not use a flash unit that only gives you this red grid because this is not compatible with a mirrorless camera's autofocus system. You need an LED light, you need a constant light source for the camera to operate properly. So let me show you how you turn the AF illuminator on or off, go to the menu and there you have the AF menu and the second sub menu. The first item is the AF illuminator. We're gonna turn it to on. And now I'm gonna illustrate what the camera actually does. I'm gonna fake a very 
dark situation by putting the lens cap on the lens and right now the camera is of course using the red LED. Let me, yes, you can see the reflection right here. That is the LED light. Of course that is not a very powerful way to illuminate the scene but by putting a dedicated micro four thirds flash unit on there like this FL600R we're gonna get a very powerful AF beam. There you can see the LED and of course it's daylight now so it doesn't look like much but when you're shooting in darkness this is really powerful and makes a huge difference. Another very cool yet often overlooked feature of the OM-1 is the zoom frame autofocus. What it does, it essentially lets you zoom in to a certain part of the image and it acquires a very precise contrast autofocus lock-on. So, as you have already heard, it's not suitable for moving subjects, but it is great when you are shooting in the studio, a still life, for example, with wide open aperture. It can also be great when you shoot something outdoors with wide open aperture and there is no movement in the frame, right? So keep in mind, zoom frame AF, highest precision for certain circumstances. Let's expand on the zoom frame autofocus function a bit because it does many more cool things. First I'd like to show you that I just mapped it to the record button. It's this little magnifying glass. So now when I press the record button the box comes up. By moving it around with the AF selector I can place it anywhere in the frame but I can also just touch the screen and place the box there. Let's put it in the middle. You can see the OM-1 is already focusing when I place this thing. There I can select the size of the box. And here is the really important thing to know. If you use this box like this and you select the 14 times magnification, the OM-1 will perform a contrast calculation in the whole green box area. And this is pretty neat because with that you can focus in practically absolute darkness as it uses a big area for contrast calculation. However, the disadvantage is of course that you get an average autofocus calculation for the whole area. So it is not as precise as the SAF with the single point or small area. That's kind of function number one. Keep in mind that I've set the OM-1 to SAF right now. Because when I switch to CAF, the OM-1 will follow focus wherever the frame is placed. So here we go. And when I put something in front, the OM-1 will attempt to refocus. So that is the second neat function. The zoom frame is actually sensitive to whether it is in SAF or CAF. Now, that's not all. I can go back to SAF, right? And now I can press the zoom autofocus button again. And then you get this super magnified view. And there you can actually see a small autofocus frame like the single point. I'm gonna move it to a bright area so you can see it better. And this AF box right here indicates that the OM-1 is using this super small precise area for contrast calculations. So if I try to focus on this super white spot right here, it cannot focus obviously. But if I move it a little bit over here, we have focus instantly because now the OM-1 has like the black and white area to calculate the autofocus. That's very, very convenient and that's the precision I was talking about earlier. So you can really zoom in even further and place the autofocus point wherever you want it. And it's gonna take a little bit longer because it's making sure that everything is 
perfectly in focus. This is not about speed, but about precision. When you are zoomed in, however, the OM1 will use SAF only. Let me illustrate that. I'm gonna zoom out, I'm gonna go to CAF, place the target in the middle, and now as long as autofocus is activated, the OM1 will use continuous autofocus. However, when I zoom in, I'm gonna focus, and now when something comes in between, the camera won't refocus. As when zoomed in, it is single focus only. So there you have it. The zoom frame autofocus function is very similar to the autofocus system that was installed in previous Olympus cameras. But it's actually been improved in the OM-1 quite a bit. Another thing I'd like to demonstrate, when you want to exit the zoom frame mode, you just have to press OK and then you are back to the regular autofocus operation. Keep in mind that zoom frame autofocus and the touch autofocus is exactly the same thing. Just a quick demo. You might recall that the OM-1 had problems focusing on this black lens surface, but now with the bigger contrast detection area, it is no issue at all. I've tested this function and tried to find out how low can it go. And really with this zoom frame autofocus, the OM-1 can acquire focus far below what OM system tells you that the OM-1 is capable of. Another great support function to improve the autofocus performance of the OM-1 under certain circumstances is the AF limiter. When you are trying to capture a subject that is behind a fence or behind a dirty window, then setting the AF limiter can really help improve the overall hit rate. Because then the OM system OM-1 knows, all right, I don't have to look for a subject from 0 to 5 meters, but only further away. And then it won't really try to find something where you actually don't want it to find something anyways. Here is how you set the AF limiter. It's pretty easy. Go to the menu and then there is the AF menu, of course, and the third AF sub menu. There, third item from the top, it's the AF limiter. Select it. There you have to turn it to either on 1, on 2 or on 3. And the great thing is that you can predefine three distances here. So the other thing to keep in mind is that infinity is always defined by 999.9 .9 meters. That's important to know. Here is how you set it. There is also this little visual indicator that gives you an idea how much of the whole AF range you are actually using. Some closing remarks. After thousands of shutter actuations, I can safely state the OM-1 has an incredibly reliable autofocus system. However, I had to put in some time to learn it. The OM-1 is a high-tech professional camera and it requires a professional mindset to achieve peak performance. Then, this camera will never get in your way. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing and following me on other social media. See you next time.